the U.S. military and people who were bombed in Hawaii were very angry and demoralized. It was in revenge for the attack on Pearl Harbor in April 1992 when the U.S. finally entered the Japanese mainland and flew by surprise. This revenge operation was the famous Doolittle Raid. It was the first attack by the United States on mainland Japan. And at the same time, it was also the first airstrikes in history in which Japan was attacked by foreign forces on its mainland. Although damage to Japan was minor at the time, the two little airstrikes was a surprise to the Japanese military, which boasted of having an impenetrable sky. The morale of the U.S. military whose pride had fallen to the bottom amidst the unbearable war situation and so on, and furthermore, this attack later became a rehearsal of the Tokyo air raid and the dropping of the atomic bomb. The United States had studied Japan's natural topography, climatic conditions, and various historical cases through preliminary research. In particular, the United States came to observe the great Moroccan fire that occurred in the Edo period and the great Gento earthquake of 1923. They also found out that Japan's large cities, which were made of wooden houses, were very vulnerable to fire. Based on these facts, it was concluded that an airstrike using incendiary bombs could inflict the most effective damage, so the M69 incendiary bomb using napalm was developed. When selecting a specific target area for air rays, they focused on population density and fire risk. Tokyo and cities outside Tokyo, where houses and factories were concentrated, were selected as final targets for attack. In this way, the plan to destroy the Japanese mainland was completed, but the problem was that the U.S. had to fly with a huge number of high explosives and incendiary bombs, so it was necessary to create a stable bombing base or airfield. Moreover, although the United States possessed the world's first nuclear bomber and the best bomber of its time, the B-29, this was not enough to fly at high altitudes with a large number of bombs for a long time. However, they were afraid of Japan's absurd kamikaze strategy to fly at low altitudes. At first, with the help of his ally Zhang Gezok of the Nationalist Party of China, he tried to utilize airfields in China, but even this plan did not work. Then, in June 1944, after the victory of the Battle of Saipan and landing in Saipan, the situation turned to an advantage. The distance between Saipan and Tokyo is about 2,500 kilometers, so the B-29's capabilities were fully utilized in terms of the planned altitudes as well as the bomb capacity. The United States quickly established bombing units and built airfields. At the same time, Air Force Chief of Staff Major General Haywood Hansel, who was recognized for his ability, was appointed as the commander. Hansel despised and hated kamikaze strategies, so he was the first to fly a reconnaissance plane over Tokyo to target and bomb Japanese aircraft factories. At that time, it was difficult to intercept American reconnaissance planes with Japanese technology. So they flew successfully over Tokyo and succeeded in capturing about 7,000 photos. In fact, Japan tried to shoot down the reconnaissance aircraft using all this technology. But while the United States successfully carried out 17 reconnaissance operations, the Japanese military only took down one reconnaissance aircraft. In Japan, there was a propaganda broadcast to American troops at that time, warning that if the first bomb fell on Tokyo, exactly six hours later, no American troops in Saipan would survive. Finally, in November 1944, about 100 B-29s each loaded with 2.5 tons of bombs started moving. As planned, they began to fly toward Japan, targeting the munition factory located in Busasino. Bombs were dropped from an altitude of about 9,000 meters or higher, 
for fear of the loss of the very precious B-29. There were bombs that fell to the extent that few bombs reached the target properly due to the jet stream over Japan. In fact, the accuracy rate was only 2% and the damage to the munition factory which was the target was minor. Also because of concerns about civilian damage, high explosives were mainly used rather than incendiary bombs. After that, 10 airstrikes were carried out targeting factories in Tokyo and other cities. But from an economic point of view, the United States was suffering a much greater loss. Even in Japan, there was a reaction that the U.S. airstrikes were not as serious as they had thought. In addition to the propaganda broadcast in Japan, Japanese citizens considered bombing to be a fun spectacle. While Major General Hansel insisted on the precision bombing at high altitude, the U.S. commander loaded 84 B-29s with 500 tons of incendiary bombs heading toward Hankou, China which was occupied by Japanese forces, they flew at a low altitude and carried out bombardment indiscriminately. After that, 50% of Hankou turned into a blazing inferno resulting in 20,000 casualties. The commander who gave the bombing order for Hankou was Curtis Emerson LeMay. Lieutenant General Doris Nostad, who evaluated LeMay's bombardment of Hankou, immediately delegated the position of Major General Han Tu, who was commander of the Tokyo Air Race, to remain. Receiving orders to neutralize Japan's military industry, Limei conducted high-altitude precision bombing using daylight hours in the same way as his predecessor Hansel, but could not avoid the disastrous result of losing 11 B-29s. Limei completely changed his strategy after struggling with disappointing results and unexpected losses. Looking back at the reconnaissance photos obtained earlier, realizing that the long-range machine guns encountered during the German bombing were rarely installed in Japan, they decided to low fly from a high altitude of 9,000 meters to 3,000 meters. The U.S. military analyzed the battle results based on Limay's analysis and found that the accuracy of Japanese anti-aircraft guns was not very effective at altitudes below 3,000 meters. So, the altitude was set between 1,500 and 3,000 meters and it was decided to conduct the night bombing in consideration of the damage caused by Japanese fighters during low flying. In addition, they decided to load only a small amount of incendiary bombs for fear of damage to civilians. However, they then changed their minds and decided to give up on the high explosives and fully load up with incendiary bombs. In fact, it was decided to drop the number of incendiary bombs used for two months in a general operation at once. It was thought that if such a large amount was dropped at once, the damage to civilians would of course be serious. From the night of March 9th to the dawn of March 10th came the long-awaited launch of a few strategic airstrikes, Limay's ultra-low altitude incendiary night bombardment. There were a total of 325 B-29 bombers that were sent and the incendiary bombs were loaded with about 7 tons of incendiary bombs for a total of about 2,400 tons. Originally, Limay was a frequent spearhead commander, but this time he had Brigadier General Thomas Power, who he trusted most, lead instead. At 10.30 p.m. Japanese Standard Time on March 9th, radio broadcasting was stopped and an alert was issued. But Japan disbanded the alert after seeing the flying object evacuate. It was actually an American reconnaissance aircraft. After the alert was lifted, the U.S. B-29 squadron approached Tokyo. And on March 10th at 12.07 a.m., incendiary bombs started pouring down like a raging storm over Tokyo. The incendiary bombs that fell to the ground colored the dark night sky with deadly golden color. 
after number one's bombing was over, number two flew in and continued bombing diagonally across, and 280 of the 325 bombers sent were completely successful in the bombing. A total of 1,700 tons of napalm incendiary and 8,000 cluster bombs were dropped on Tokyo. The spot where the B-29 squadron passed was spewing flames in an X-chain. The flames were caught in the turbulence and there was a scene where a wooden house and a munition factory as well as people were devoured by the flames. At that time, Tokyo was said to have a well-equipped firefighting system, but the United States had calculated these points, and such a firefighting system was no use at all for an outpouring of this amount of incendiary bombs. In fact, more than 8,000 well-trained firefighters and 1,000 fire engines were deployed, but in just 30 minutes, the fire engines that worked to extinguish the fire were almost destroyed and many firefighters were killed. On the other hand, after the bombing, many refugees fled desperately and hurriedly to Kenosa Temple because they believed that they would be killed by the Buddha because they had never been affected by various fire. However, due to the nature of the temple, the structure was only made of wood and the temple quickly turned into a huge crematorium and the usual quarrel was also utterly in ashes. At that time, geishas tried to escape, but the administrators who were strict about the escape geishas closed the front door, and in the end, they were all burned to death. As a result, the American bombing devastated Tokyo in about five hours. According to the official Japanese statistics, in one day, 80,000 people died, 50,000 were injured, 1 million became refugees, and about 260,000 houses were damaged due to the Tokyo air raid. The bombing method using the B-29 bomber was also applied in the carpet bombing of the North Korean side during the Korean War, resulting in a huge number of civilian casualties. Many experts view these indiscriminate strikes as a factor in bringing in the Pacific War to an end, resulting in no more casualties and Japan's rapid surrender. Of course, the atomic bombing decisively led to Japan's surrender, but it was true that this gruesome air raid on Tokyo served as a decisive factor in completely defeating the will of the Japanese military and people.